Ella. Can I have one last question? Just one that's totally different. I was listening to one of your talks, and I was really curious about it. Someone had asked about soulmates, and you said that our higher self can possibly choose more than one being at a time. You come in clusters. Everything that we're talking about, about the receptive mode, is coming into vibrational alignment with what you want to call soul. So come into that and then follow the impulse and you'll find that which is a perfect match to all of that. People want to take the term soulmate and they want to make it out to be there's someone significantly right for me, which means everybody else is wrong for me. And if I don't find that specific one, then I can't live happily ever after. And you could live happily ever after with a multitude of different beings that have a multitude of different right. desires and even intentions, as long as you are in sync with who you are. Some of the greatest experiences of your lifetime will come from being up close to somebody who doesn't agree with everything that you say. Because in that relationship, it will cause you both to expand into a place that you couldn't if you were identical, you see. So your soulmate, we promise you, is not someone who thinks and believes and wants exactly as you do. Because you've come with intention for expansion. So... Some of the people that you regard as your greatest nemesis, your greatest problem people are your soulmates. <laughs> you have this agreement. We'll go forth and we'll just harass each other into expansion. <laughs> We're not kidding. We will inspire each other into greater understanding of who we are. Sameness perpetuates complacency. Difference inspires expansion. It's interesting the myriad of conversations that we've had over the years on endless subjects that can all now be much more easily understood when you bring into the equation the receptive mode. Because when you get into the receptive mode, your inner being will guide you. You see, it's sort of like this. Often people think, well, if I were really the angel that Abraham says that I was when I was born, and if I were really in that powerful, good place of, of attraction, then why is there any contrast? Why wouldn't my nest really be feathered? Why wouldn't everything that I now know I want have been presented to me every step along the way? And we say, first of all, because you couldn't have known you wanted it without some life experience that helped you to carve it out. And not one of you came for a feathered nest. Every one of you came to create and expand and enjoy. And when we talk about the sweet spot of creation, we're really talking about, so life has caused you to put a lot in your vortex and a lot that's there, a lot of those desires that you have defined have come because you've known what you did not want. So there is all this vibrational components that you've put there, like the ingredients of a cake. And law of attraction has mixed them together and exaggerated them and amplified them. And your inner being's been right in the mix of them, guiding it, perpetuating it, watching it, standing as the point of attraction that law of attraction is responding to. And so who you are becoming vibrationally, which is always precedes what happens next, has been coming and coming and coming. And then you meditate or have a happy moment or find yourself somehow some way maybe deliberately maybe by default in the receptive mode and you catch a glimpse of that desire and once you catch a glimpse of that desire now this is when the deliberate life experience begins to become really sweet because now that you know that you want it now you have to tune your daily thought process to match it what you must do and what you came to do is to take this new fresh desire that was born out of all that you've lived and train your belief patterns, your patterns of thought to allow this new desire to be. Did you get that? Because you've got a new desire that is real and has momentum and your inner being is behind it and you put all the pieces of it there and you can trust it. But if you've got beliefs that make you feel doubt or fear, then those beliefs are hindering your ability to recognize and realize it. And when you understand this process and you do not allow those beliefs 
to hinder this desire. You're just determined to somehow, some way, line up with the desire. Never mind reality. Never mind what you used to think. Never mind what they think about it in Australia. Never mind how you used to think when you were in Australia. Never mind how anything ever went before. It's just this fresh new desire that just happened and the universe and energy that creates worlds backing it up and you get to witness the fleshing out of that. That is the sweet spot, you see. Yay. <laughs> It's what every one of you were born to live. That's what you came for. You didn't come to muck around in this and to convince other people against their will and to get them to think just like you do and to bring them into alignment or even to just find people that think like you do so that you don't have to think. I'll just follow the thread of what you all are thinking and I won't make any trouble for myself. You're not ever going to be able to do that. You didn't come for that. You came to think and you came to think your way into happiness. You came to think your way into alignment. You came to be the extension of who you really are. And nothing less than that will ever do for any of you, you say. Really good conversation. Thank you. Thank you.